Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial. So obviously, it's Friday, the literal best of all days. Hitting you up with part two of painting the Iron Hand Scouts. I love these guys because it gave me the opportunity to show you guys the difference between a tabletop standard AK and three color minimum, which by the way, I hate that term because it makes people lazy. It shows you the difference between that and what just, you know, an hour more work could do. Love this hobby. Be, you know, be enthusiastic and be passionate and you will have amazing looking models that you're proud of for years. Anyway, I don't want to talk you guys ear off today. So just remember, check out the longword.net. We have exclusive content, download section with sick battle reports, everything you could ever hope for. And don't forget, I have a Patreon page, my personal crowdfunding page helps me at Next Level Painting bring hobby back. Anyway, thanks for checking this video out. Let's do this thing. Iron Hands Scouts Part 2, taking it to the next level. Let's jump into our five best techniques for getting it done. In the last video, you remember that we got these scouts tabletop ready. Three color minimum, fuck a three color minimum. We don't stop there. Next level painting process 2.0. Right now we're doing some simple wet blending techniques. Uh, just bringing some of that brown that we use, those khaki colors that we use for the pants. We're just bringing it back in, slapping it back on. We're letting the wash guide us here. The wash that we slathered all over their pants is gonna settle into the crevasses and kind of pull away from the raised surfaces. That's literally telling you exactly where to apply the highlight. That's why it's really important and advantageous to use wash technique with this technique. As you can see, I'm just following the edges here, a little bit of edge highlight on some of the pouches, a little bit of wet blend technique on the big th fat thigh areas. We're going to do that to all our models, and then we're going to move on to the highlight in the silver. Yet again, another amazing technique, dry brush. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and walk you through the whole process. You can Google anyone's video on how to do this. The dry brush technique is simple. We're going to utilize the brightest color we have this aluminum color and we're gonna yet again combo it off the black wash we threw all over this metal and we're gonna dry brush it along giving it that antique realistic beat up image of a perfect like you know war torn uh, metallic surface and you can see how all these nuts and bolts these edges are catching the really bright metal so only the most extreme surfaces have this really bright look where all the darkest stuff has that with that weathering from the, the known oil wash you know when we're talking about technique you can't go anywhere without the dry brush technique it always has a place no matter how advanced you get at painting the dry brush technique will always be in your in your toolbox so as you see we apply it to the hammer even the rounded areas sometimes it gets kind of streaky on the round spots but you can see like on the shaft of the hammer it looks cool it looks it looks interesting so let's go to one of my personal next level painting classics this is a technique you can't go anywhere without typhus corrosion solid weathering effects make models look interesting especially black boring iron hands like simple blacks are really hard to make look interesting so you gotta do the best you can especially them they're black and silver it's so lame so i mean you gotta come in here, you gotta make it interesting any way you can Typhus corrosion. Apply it liberally, apply it conservatively, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Typhus corrosion is just a simple game changer. I look for spots where big pieces of metal connect other pieces of metal. I look for bolts. I'm using a big brush to start with, and I'll usually switch over to a sponge, aka a piece of pluck and full foam that I carved up with an X-Acto knife for the purpose of, you know, splattering it out on the edges. But I do like to keep it real thick there in the cut for that texture. We're moving on to highlight in the skin. I'm using a little elf skin tone from the Vallejo Air series. This is a really good use of that thin Vallejo Air uh, skin. It doesn't really um, coat very thickly, so it's really kind of perfect for this subtle highlighting technique. And like yet again, the wash that we applied, the brown wash, is showing us exactly where we need to highlight. That's why you got to use your, you got to combo off the, the highlight game with the wash game. So it's showing me here that the bridge, that the brow ridges 
they need some more highlighting. Anything that's lighter, the lightest colors that the, the you know that the wash pulled away from, highlight those. Be subtle, you know. Uh, hit his chin, hit his cheekbones, drag it down. You know, try to follow, try to trace some of those wrinkles on his forehead. Be very subtle and very deliberate with this, though. It's real. I know for a lot of people, painting faces is super hard. When I started Warmer 40K, I literally could not paint a face to save my life. It looks so shitty. And now they're just easy to me because I, you know, get a good base down with it with a real solid uh, coat of, of flesh, and then I hit the wash, and then I come back and use this technique. And as you can see here, they're coming along. Put them on their new upgraded bases, and you can see that this looks a lot different than what they looked like at the end of the last video. What we had called tabletop ready three color standard started to look shitty now compared to the proper amount of love that you put into this hobby. I hate the concept of three color minimums. Anyway, let's jump into highlighting the bones. We're going back to Menoth White Highlights. This is a great bone color for the P3 series. Love it. Sick coverage. They just are such good paints. And we're coming into this bone Aquila that we started up with, kind of using the Iron Hands White, a little bit of creative freedom here. And we're just now, same thing. We've talked about, this is the third time I've talked about, the wash has showed us where to highlight. As we applied the wash from the previous video, and I showed you how to wick it away from the big flat surface to let it settle into the crevasses, as it were, it leaves some highlighted areas. They look great all on their own, but if you come in there and just hit it with a real subtle final highlight, pop, pops that, pops it out to the next level. So highlighting is a clutch technique. You need to use it, it's one of the best techniques there is. We're going back into our grays. These are the grays we started with from the very beginning of the video. They're already in our blacks a little bit, but as I've been going, I've been cutting black back into the model, like from, you know, smearing paint onto the black by accident. So there's almost nothing of the gray left. It's almost all pure black. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing incredibly dark gray. I'm taking the darker gray, mixing it with my black and making it very subtle, almost impossible to see when it's, you know, until it dries. And I'm going to just carve in some real thick highlights, but it's very subtle. So it's not going to look stupid. You know, pick out the cod piece right there, the old crotch bulge. Doesn't make any sense. I don't understand scout armor. Uh, gonna, you know, trim out the uh, the ab blocker or whatever that is. You know, tops of the boots. This is all real simple technique. Uh, you could leave it at this if you wanted to, and it would look like it had depth because black is a tricky color to highlight. You know, you, you, you can go down the rabbit's hole of, of edge highlighting skinnier and skinnier lines and thinner lines and brighter colors and never be quite happy with it because you know what? Black sucks. Don't paint it. If you can avoid it, if you can come up with an alternate color, like one of the successor chapters or something, I strongly recommend it. But for all you people who are faithful uh, and believe in the flesh is weak, let's, you know, let's jump into this silly highlighting black. So now that we've got that super dark, subtle highlight of black down, we're going to switch to German Grey. German Grey is clutch in the world of highlighting. And you can see we have that nice little gray line there, and we're coming with a German Grey and draw another skinnier line. Now, you can leave it this big if you want to. You can leave the highlight that thick if you want to and be happy with it. Um, I'm just showing you the color operations here. What I would do is I would come back in with the dark gray that we made, and I would cut the line back in sharper that way versus trying to hyper-focus on drawing a skinny line from the beginning. Now we're going to go into the, one of the best techniques, Blood for the Blood God. This is a great GW technical color. What I'm doing here is I'm slathering it on to the chainsaw blades. Get it nice and thick inside of there, because this, and, all, and do, your pro tip, do all of your seal coats before this. This is the last thing you do, because this is gloss. So if you matte coat it down, you'll lose that natural gloss that makes it look amazing. Using my ancient Chinese trick here, using the pluck and pull foam that I carved up with an X-Acto knife, and I'm now spreading out some of that blood with trying to create a splatter effect, and it will dry glossy, like I said, and look like actual blood. And you can see now it looks nice, now it looks officially splattered, and officially done. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching how to take these scouts to that next level. Please go check the last episode if you haven't seen it yet, where we show how to get them to that three color, which I hate to say minimum, that tabletop ready standard. And thank you for watching this video on Play On, players. Thanks for checking out that video. Don't forget. I've got tons of other tutorials in the archives, and I do this every week for free. If you're looking for an ad-free experience, check out thelongward.net.
All these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad free. Also, check out my best friend Rob Bear at Spiky Bits and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.